Mexico City is one of the largest cities on the planet, and we're right in the thick of it. What Central Park is to the city of New York, Parque de Chapultepec, or Chapultepec Park, is to Mexico City. This is the place that replenishes the air uh, for this gigantic city, among the top five uh, size-wise in the world. This park, uh, from a Nahuatl word called uh, Chapultepec, which I think means the Hill of Grasshoppers, uh, was the getaway, the retreat for Aztec royalty in pre-Columbian uh, times, the pre-Hispanic era. So it's always had an important uh, place for the dwellers uh, of this region. Uh, first pre-Hispanics, and then after post-Hispanic, uh, the uh, settlers of uh, European settlers and so on, and all the way down to imperialistic and democratic, democratic Mexico. So we're going to get to learn about this place, and it's right here, folks, crossing south. So stay with us. This is the Chapultepec Forest. Let's explore it. With a city that has always been associated with car congestion and pollution, the function of Chapultepec Park is vital to this city. Mexico City inhabitants flock here every weekend with their families where you will find a typical old-time way of life. This is the open-air market for Chapultepec, basically. Tons of throngs of people just walking about. And, you know, there's a version of this in basically every Mexican city. Many cities around the planet, even. But this is Chapultepec's version. So this is where the uh, capital dwellers are out and about. But uh, this park really keeps the city alive. Uh, this is Mexico City's lung. We're trying to find the uh, Chapultepec Castle, and we're kind of lost. We've, we've asked for directions, uh, orientation, about five times already. So we finally found our way. There's a little choo-choo train that takes you up to the top of the hill where Chapultepec Castle is located. There's a lot of history behind this building. It has great significance to Mexico, which is taught in history class to kids all over the country. So we're gonna get to see this place right now, a really beautiful historical building that's been residential palace for uh, heads of state, for uh, different diplomats, uh, military academy, which is the most famous thing uh, it was known for, it's known for, and now a museum. So we're gonna get to see it right now, folks. Hope you enjoy it. Now reaching the summit, you get to see evidence of Mexico's colonial past. A past indelibly linked to United States history. Something similar to that is probably the view the cadets and their instructors of this military academy uh, had during the uh, last days of the U.S.-Mexican War. As the Marines were laying siege to this, which was basically the last bastion to give out in, in, that, uh, in that conflict, uh, they were bracing themselves as the Marines were about to storm the Chapultepec Castle. It's been many things, but during that time, 1847, the last days of that war, it was a military academy. And we're going to learn right now what happened on that day, on that tragic day and victorious day, depending on which side you were on. As the rest of Mexico's army had already been defeated by the U.S. armed forces, this military academy became the last stronghold to fall. The events that followed created unlikely heroes in Mexican lore. Okay, so just picture the scene, 1847, you know, siege is ending, uh, U.S. Marines are storming this place. And, you know, when you're storming, think of the mindset of soldiers. They've just lost comrades trying to take this place. When they're walking in, they're bloodthirsty. You know, they, they don't want to just see people give up. They're probably killing everyone on site. So the cadets are holding up, and Mexican lore says the last cadets, the ones that fought to the last, held themselves up, up in that tower, you know, where that Mexican flag is, and did not give it up to the uh, U.S. invaders. One of them, called Juan Escutia, wrapped himself around this flag and just hurled himself uh, to his death from that tower so that Americans wouldn't take it. That's the legend. Uh, that's, that's Mexican history. Whether it happened or not, could be debatable, could be not. I mean, who knows what happened that, on that year, on that event, uh, for real. But those cadets are still remembered uh, in Mexico as heroes. They're called the Niños the uh, hero children, and their statues are right here. They're on this balcony in Chapultepec Castle. So forever immortalized 
for their last but ultimately uh, failed stand against uh, the U.S. Uh, Marine Force. There is so much to see and so much to learn. The Mexican government maintains this facility, which is worth a stop for any who travel to the capital. Okay, you should know, folks, that in, in the U.S., Cinco de Mayo means a lot of <laughs> very different things than what it means historically. Uh, in the U.S., it's just, it's just a day for partying and for celebrating Latino culture. But in history, this is what happened on Cinco de Mayo. That's the Batalla de Puebla, the Battle of Puebla, when the French army invaded Mexico. And General Zaragoza won that battle uh, against the French army, but did not win the war. That's something many people don't know. That's, they won a battle, it's a famous battle, but Mexico was actually occupied by the French army for a significant amount of time. And we're going to learn about that right now. We're going to get to see how there was even a French emperor, an Austrian emperor uh, in Mexico. We're going to go learn that right now. So stay with us, folks. It's Crossing South. As is the case with many countries in the developing world, European colonialism is part of Mexico's past. It was an occupied country. Royalty and aristocracy were very much part of its history in its journey towards being a republic democracy. Interestingly, French culture had a great influence in Mexico due to some of its rulers' affinity to it. Hey folks, tell me something. Is it me or is that guy cross-eyed? During the French occupation of Mexico, uh, 62 to 67 about, you wasn't going to allow that, you know, having a foreign European power ruling in its backyard, which is Mexico. Um, but they were busy with the Civil War, so they couldn't do anything. So it wasn't until the Civil War ended that they finally, oh, okay, directed their attention to Mexico and actually sent reinforcements, reinforcements to President Benito Juarez uh, to fight off the French, and the French left. So imagine that. First, the U.S. was an invader of Mexico, and then an aider with troops to fight the French. So, go figure. Alliances change all over, you know? You know, looking at this castle, it's a beautiful structure. It's, 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 it's the place where Mexican royalty lived. And I, and I see this, this large beauty, but it's also cold, isn't it? I mean, you imagine these palaces that people from colonial times and before that lived in, but there's not much for comfort. It doesn't, it doesn't, feel, it doesn't feel like a cozy place to live in. As the day sets, tourists are invited to make their way out. Chapultepec Castle is a necessary stop if you are to understand the Mexican culture and its idiosyncrasies. Hello there, thank you for watching that Crossing South video on the KPBS YouTube channel. If you like that, click the subscribe button up here so you can watch more videos like that. Take care, bye-bye.